Hello, I'm Debbie Bell Hosking for Finextra TV here at Cybos in London. And I'm talking to Every Pakjan of City. Hello. Hi, good morning, Debbie. How are you? Very well, thank you. We're talking payments. Yep. So we have regulation, we have data protection, we've got open banking, instant payments. Is there a conflict with all these moving parts and how money is moved? There isn't really a conflict. There, there is a method to this madness. Um, as, as the payment industry tries to evolve um, and, and create the type of foundation upon which we should be innovating, it's very important that these different pieces come together and, and help us actually create the right rails. And how does all of this impact cross-border payments? Uh, cross-border payments is, um, is evolving very, very fast. And there's a few reasons for that. Um, one of the reasons is, you know, we can all see electronic commerce, e-commerce, which has been which has been consistently changing and growing over the past two decades, has now come to a point where everybody is a merchant and everybody is a buyer. Even an entrepreneur who starts, you know, sitting in some part of the world in some emerging market and developing their own goods and services, before you know, they are in a marketplace selling their goods and services. And that is continuously increasing the demand on cross-border payments. Very small value payments, but they are in all different currencies and going to all different parts of the world. So as you start actually thinking about that world, certain things start becoming very important. One of them is real-time, real-time instant payments. The ability to be able to make these transactions online. Ability to do these things when there is still a lot of regulations, a lot of barriers, but being able to do full value transfers, etc. But it's hugely important that these type of regulations actually fuel cross-border payments, their velocity, their volume, and the small value transactions without attracting lots of charges to be able to enable commerce globally. And how can businesses benefit? For, for, for businesses, for many businesses, cross-border payments aren't necessarily a new phenomenon. However, for any of those businesses which are actually looking at new growth prospects, where they are really trying to increase the variety of their suppliers, um, going beyond their borders in terms of their clients, who are trying to attract more global clients, the need for cross-border payments for the reasons that I was describing before is going to be increasing. And therefore, um, ability to access cheaper, faster and more reliable cross-border payments is hugely important for businesses to be able to actually meet these growth objectives. And if you think about what open banking is going to be able to allow in Europe, for example, it means that you're going to be able to actually debit a bank account directly online when your customer is purchasing a good. And, and that might mean actually cheaper and faster transactions, certainly, but also for the consumer, the benefit is you don't have to think about what transaction or what bank account you're going to use. You can just use your home bank account. And do you think it's enough for banks to satisfy their customers' demands? I think depending, depending on what client segments banks are covering, there's a lot that they're going to have to think about around that client segment. Because, you know, payments is actually a means to an end, right? And it's very important to think about the end-to-end -end transaction as to why that payment is being made in the first place, how it impacts the remitter, how it impacts the beneficiary, and um, what type of information flows may be very important in making the, the remitter, for example, being able to have more timely information in terms of the status of the, of the payment so that they can actually reconcile these more easily. If you, are, um, if you are actually a large corporation, the volume of transactions that you do are so many, you really don't want to think about these transactions. You want the data to, at your fingertips to be able to do that better reconciliation. So banks and the industry alike will need to think about more of that end-to-end -end value chain and keep innovating at the different book ends of it. And oftentimes they're going to have to partner with others like fintechs, um, like other technology companies to, to try to find problem, sol solutions to broader problems than just the payments piece. Ebru, thank you. That was very enlightening. Thank you very much. And lovely to meet you.